We're in broadcast mode. I don't, here we are. The people are coming in. It takes just a little bit of time. Um, I'm going to get started in just a minute or so. So sit tight. Um, just let everybody get into the room. I'll be welcoming all of you formally in just a minute or so as everybody has a chance to get inside the room. Oh, everybody is slowly moving in. We'll get started in just a moment. All right, let's get started. I want to welcome everybody to the Mass LOMAP webinars for busy lawyers, where in 20 to 30 minutes, you will walk away with some practical advice that you can put to work immediately to make your practice and firm much, much better. And uh, today I have the pleasure of welcoming Elise Holtzman. Elise is the founder of The Lawyer's Edge. She helps lawyers and law firms thrive and grow by becoming adept, adept at and comfortable with business development, practice management, and law firm leadership. A former practicing attorney and certified professional coach with 12 years of experience working exclusively with lawyers, Elise uses live and virtual workshops and coaching to enable attorneys to learn how to maximize their potential, including developing client business in a way that aligns with their personalities, preferences, and values. She has significant experience working with solo and small law firms and is passionate about her work. In just a minute, I'm gonna turn this over to Elise, but before then, I just wanna remind you that you can ask your questions at any time by putting them in the chat box. Just pull up that chat box and I'll even pull it up for you momentarily um, to show you where it is and you can put your questions in. At the end of Elise's presentation, I will read those questions back to her and we will have as much time as needed for her to answer those questions and for you to add in any additional questions you have. So without anything further, I'm going to turn this over to Elise. Thank you so much, Susan. Hi, everybody. I am really excited to be here with you today. Um, I am dialing in from New Jersey, just outside of New York City. So like you, I'm welcoming back some nicer weather. Um, and I know we don't have a lot of time today. I know we're going to do some powerful stuff in the next 30 minutes. So I'm just going to dive right in. So today we're going to talk about how to maintain a thriving practice in times of crisis. I think it's fair to say that there are challenges and opportunities there even when there aren't times of crisis and we're, we're just in a different boat these days. So let's talk about um, what that looks like. Okay, so first of all, I think it's fair to say that this is sudden and seismic change. This is not something that most of us were sitting around thinking were going to happen. I mean, even it was going to happen, even healthcare professionals um, some of them did not know this was coming. And so this came over us very quickly uh, and has had a tremendous impact on most people, both from a psychological perspective and an emotional perspective and from an economic perspective. It can be particularly hard, as you all know, on smaller firms when something like this happens. You don't have a big team behind you to help you navigate this sort of change. Some of the approach uh, that you might be taking or the feelings you might have can be summed up in these two word clouds. The one on the left has all of these, you know, negative, horrible feelings. And the one on the right is much more hopeful, right? We can be thinking about things like, wow, this could be a great opportunity. Um, you know, I can, I can express gratitude about all of the wonderful things I have in my life. Uh, and so it'd be really nice to get from that word cloud on the left to the word cloud on the right. Um, but, you know, I'm not a Pollyanna. This isn't all sweetness and puppies. This is a genuinely difficult situation. But I do think that there are ways to, to get from one to the other, or at least to start to make that shift. 
from the left side to the right side, whether we're talking about what's going on in your personal life or talking about what's going on with your practice. So I'll just take a, another minute. Um, Susan introduced me and told you a little bit about me. Um, and just take note of this for a minute because I, I want you, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this later um, and what you can do with something like this in your own practice. So, you know, I've got this slide here that tells you a little bit about me um, because I think that when people are on a webinar and start talking to you about things and giving you advice, it's nice to know why they're even there. You know, how do they have any authority to, to give you these pieces of advice. Um, and so, you know, you'll notice that I put up on the screen things like places I've published articles, um, places I've spoken, uh, a couple of podcasts that I've been on or the last one that I'm about to be on. Uh, and on the left, the kind of work that I do. Um, so we'll get back to that in a, in a, in a little while. What I want to talk to you about today is a four-step plan for navigating change. I think that when we are experiencing chaos and uncertainty, it's nice to have a, a plan or some kind of structure to hold on to so that we know uh, kind of what to do next. And so I think that, and you can use this, uh, you can use pieces of it, you can use all of it. Um, I would recommend that you, you go through step by step, and, and, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and the first step is focusing on yourself, right? This is, it's hard to adjust to change. As I mentioned, nobody, most people, I guess I should say, don't like change. We, we sort of like to have some predictability in our lives. And unless you're one of those people who kind of likes to throw yourself off a bridge attached to the end of a bungee cord, and I, I can promise you I'm not one of those people, um, you know, you don't, you don't like rapid change or major risk all of a sudden. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you can first focus on yourself and start adjusting to this change. Take, take care um, to make sure that you are paying attention to what's going on for you personally. And, you know, there's that cliche about on the airplane, putting the oxygen mask on yourself first before you put it on someone else. And while cliches can be a little bit annoying, they're cliches for a reason. And so I do think it's important to focus on yourself first. Then there's the question of leading. So when you are, if you're an owner of your own practice or you're running your own practice, there's a question about how you lead through change. Um, you may not have a big team. We'll talk about that again in a minute. It may just be you, but even so, you've got to lead yourself through this change. And so we can talk a little bit about how you can do that. The third step is to really build your foundation. Now is a really good time to focus on things in your practice that are kind of emergencies, what needs to happen right away, and also focus on what you can do to set your practice up for success. And we'll get into more detail about that. And then finally, step four is all about marketing and business development, uh, focusing on your existing clients and also focusing on your contacts so that you don't let your marketing and business development falter during this time. So let's talk about step one, where you focus a little bit on yourself. So first of all, I think it's really important to make sure that you are you know, taking that time for yourself, acknowledge and validate your feelings. It's understandable if you feel uncomfortable, if you feel uncertain, if you're frightened, if you don't know what direction to go in. It may not be desirable, but it's understandable. There's nothing weird about it. It would be a little weird if you didn't feel that way. Um, and so, you know, give yourself that opportunity to say, it's okay that I feel how I feel. Again, when you focus on yourself, you can get a little bit more self-awareness. Um, how am I showing up right now? How is this impacting me? How does my background and my personality, how, how do my background and personality figure into this? Um, and so, you know, people are talking about taking care of physical, emotional, and safety needs. When I say safety, I'm talking about the idea that some people may be in um, unsafe situations during lockdown. And so there are people um, in the organization, uh, the, the lawyer assistance program and those sorts of things. And I know that um, the people at Mass Low Map um, and the people that are affiliated with them want to be able to be helpful to you in this time. So please, if you're in a situation like that, if you need help, don't just ignore it, reach out. Um, and then a couple of other things. One is to try to look at this from a bigger perspective. You know, right now we're so uncomfortable um, and it's so weird and it's changed so dramatically. But over the course of history, we know that these sorts of things have happened, um, whether it's in you know, wars or other 
you know, other times where there have been pandemics and those sorts of things. 9-11, for example, is probably the one that for most of us uh, rings, rings the most true and that we've had experience with. So if we can try to get a 30,000 foot view, it might make it easier to deal with the day to day. Another thing is to not worry about perfection right now. I mean, I think some of us have gotten better at that. Um, but some of us are still trying to figure out how to be the best lawyer or the best parent or the best spouse or the best child um, during this epidemic. And you got to give yourself a break. So what we're going to do now is start to think about focusing on a process. And one of the things that I want to mention to you is something called the Bridges Transition Model. And it was, it's, uh, it, it's based on a book written by William Bridges called Transition, Making Sense of Life's Changes. And um, I actually own a copy of it. I've read it. I recommend it to you if you think that it could be helpful. So here's a, a little chart or a little uh, graphic of how the Bridges Transition Model works. If you notice on the left side, the vertical axis, um, there's the question of productivity, right? And you'll see that it dips and rises again. One of the things that's super interesting about this though, and I've thought is really interesting, is that transition actually begins with an ending. And so right now we're in this process of being in an ending where life as we know it, our practices as we know it, at least for the time being, have ended. And it's reasonable and understandable to have a reaction to that and have our productivity go down. We may not know how to proceed. We may not know how to serve our clients or how to run our practices. And you know, as we, as time goes on along the bottom axis, we may start to um, get into a situation where, okay, we're figuring out this might last longer than we expected, not really sure what to do about this. And as we start to learn to deal with what's going on, the productivity level can start going up. And we can actually start to look at this as some sort of opportunity. So for example, some people are saying, wow, this is really cool. Maybe we will be able to work from home more if we like. Um, maybe this will be, maybe we will connect more frequently with people, even if we can't get to see them in person because we're used to using Zoom calls and that sort of thing. Uh, and that's where you see the productivity begin to go up. So right now, many of us are, may, we may still be in phase one here. We may still be in this ending phase where we're kind of mourning what's been lost and we haven't even made it to that neutral zone where we're starting to learn how to deal with it. But I do think it's important to note this model because it gives you a sense that good things are coming, right? We're going to be able to make sense of this. We're going to be able to, you know, you're resilient. All of us are resilient and we're going to be able to figure it out. Okay, so step two, um, focus on your team. So, you know what, I, I realize now that I forgot to ask Susan to put up a poll. Um, and Susan, if you could put up the first poll, and we talked about the idea that they may all come up at the same time. We're not totally sure how this is going to go, but we're going to give it a shot. Okay, so um, let's do, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this or not. Let's give it a try, because somehow this is in, um, it's all in one poll. So let's first go back to poll one, which describes your stress level. So if there's a way for you to vote on this. Um, vote on your stress level. And I don't see anybody voting, so I don't know if we actually can vote. Uh, I did enable that, so you should okay, be Okay, no problem. To... Yep, there we go. Somebody's Stop voting. Somebody. All right, guys, <laughs> so hopefully you see this on your screen and you can figure out how to vote. So we're going to vote on the first one, which of the following best describes your stress level. And I'm very happy to see there's someone with no stress. So that's a hardy soul. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and so it looks like um, nobody else is voting. So that's fine. And then um, the same person, I think it must be the same person, is fully staffed with multiple team me members and very comfortable with business development. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so I'll give it another few seconds to see if anybody else wants to vote. And then I'll go ahead and take that off the screen. Okay, we got somebody else with some moderate stress. Certainly understandable. Okay, good. So the folks that are responding uh, have some people that they can delegate to and have some team members that they're working with, and they're reasonably comfortable with business development. Um, so that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and end this poll. Um, and I'm going to talk to, this is what we got so far. Um, 
the poll results that I saw. And I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing that. Okay, trying to close this thing. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so the second thing we're going to talk about is focusing on your team. So if, if you're on the call and you don't have a team, I'd like you to focus on this anyway and pay attention to it. Um, because even if you don't have an official team, you may have people in your family or friends or you know, the occasional person that helps you out with something who are invested in your success and want to know what's going on and, and be of help to you in some way. So I just think it's really important. We don't have to delve into this for too long, but it's really important to have frequent communication and check-ins and be sure that you're being honest with people. You may not have all the answers. That's completely okay. I don't think any of us has all of the answers. Um, but I think that being transparent right now is really important to people. They don't want to be they don't want to feel like they're being left out of the loop because that when you don't have information that typically raises your stress level people want to feel that they have some agency um, and they, that at, at least knowing what goes on what's going on gives them a sense that they have a little bit of control it's also important to see if you can meet people's reasonable needs you don't have to meet every single need and every single request but if you can be a little bit flexible uh, flex towards other people's needs, flex towards their personalities. You know, maybe you're super detail oriented and they're not. Uh, maybe they need more detail and you don't like to give it, or you're really extroverted and they're really introverted. Um, so I think it's important to be aware of, you know, to the extent you know your team members reasonably well, to be aware of what might be getting in their way, what might be a stress point for you in terms of your communications, and be a little more cognizant about trying to flex towards them a little bit so that you can try to meet them halfway. Um, also, of course, expressing, uh, expressing appreciation to people. Um, yes, you know, you're paying them. Yes, it's their job. But I think everybody likes to be, to be thanked and appreciated, especially in a time like this. Okay, so now we're gonna get a little more into the nitty gritty of making sure you're focusing on your practice. And I kind of split it into two sections. What is gonna make things easier for you right now. You know, we've been under lockdown for a while, so you may have figured out all of this or most of this, but if you haven't, what's left? What's not working? What are people complaining about? Are there people who aren't able to get in touch with you? Um, is there some technology that's not working as well as it could? Is there something you're not comfortable with? You know you can use it, but you're not particularly comfortable with it. Um, any little changes that you can make to what you've already established, uh, it makes sense to, you know, kind of put on a list and see if you can work through that because it's, I think it's fair to say that we're going to be doing this for a fairly long time. Uh, of course, responding to clients' concerns, and if you haven't already done this, making very clear to all of them, even ones perhaps that are not active with you, um, how they can reach you and how you can, how you will respond to them. And then, of course, making sure that your firm is financially stable. Um, so I think it's, it's just important, you know, we've been kind of, um, in a fight or state of fight or flight for a number of weeks now. And so now hopefully things are starting to settle down for you a little bit. And now's the time where you can shift over to the right side of the page. So in addition to, to working on what your current needs are and kind of triaging the situation, thinking about moving forward. So, you know, some people may not be as busy as they have been in the past, which can certainly be frightening and daunting for financial reasons. Um, if that's the case for you, one of the things you may decide to do is use some of this time to allow you to take care of some things that you perhaps have been overlooking or ignoring in your, in your practice. And so in order to, to have a thriving law firm for the long term and to be running your law firm like a true business, it's really important for you to sit down and do some planning. And again, if you have team members who can help you, that's great. Um, but sit down and think about what kind of systems do I need? What do I want this practice to look like in a year under the best of circumstances, let's say, and then also under these circumstances? You know, what's reasonable or maybe what's a little bit of a reach goal for me? So when I think about building systems, um, I'm talking about things like how you intake clients. You know, is there a specific methodology that you use to get clients into the practice on board? Are you using practice management software? you know, like Clio or Cosmolex or my case or one of those where uh, you're using it a little bit, but you could be using its functionality to really streamline things in your practice. And you're so busy most of the time that you don't take the time to learn how to use those things more appropriately, or you haven't given your team members the time 
to get trained up on those things so that you can use them more effectively. Now's a good time to do some of that stuff. If you don't have a team or you have a team where you've got a couple things being taken care of, but there are some things you'd still like to have, um, now's a great time to start building a virtual team. So I have a, a bookkeeper who's in Michigan. Um, I have a virtual assistant who's in Pennsylvania. There are, and they're very, very effective. And I pay them for the work that they do. I'm not paying them full time. I'm not pay, paying them part time. They're not employees. Um, so there's so much out there these days that you can use. You can have a graphic designer if you want you know, something new on your website. You can start assembling this team even if you're not going to use them and have their names and phone numbers and email addresses so that when the time comes, your team is already established and you can jump into action. Um, also a good time to evaluate your expenses. You know, Many of you may be obsessing over the expenses and obsessing over the income. Again, you know, understandable. Um, but if you haven't been, if you're kind of um, pulling the wool over your own eyes a little bit and kind of avoiding it because it's uncomfortable, I encourage you to just take a deep breath and sit down with it uh, because it's, it, it's very important for you, you to know from a business perspective. And I think it is also important for you from a peace of mind perspective to know what's going on in your own practice so that you're really the one who's in control. Uh, finally, on this topic, I would say take some valuable CLE. And when I talk about valuable CLE, what I mean is, you know, not getting to the end of your reporting period and suddenly realizing that you have, you know, 24 credits to do in the next week. And so you're taking underwater basket weaving for lawyers just to get some credit in there, right? So whatever your practice area is, I would encourage you to use this time to, to take some CLE that's going to be valuable for you. Okay, so let's talk about marketing and business development for a minute. Um, I wrote an article recently that was published in the New York Law Journal about marketing and business development during the COVID crisis. I was getting a lot of questions and push, pushback from my clients about, you know, how can I do this or can I do this? Do I have to stop reaching out to people? Do I have to start stop marketing? Because, you know, it's a time of crisis. People are going through terrible things right now. And how can I be so mercenary? as to promote my business. Um, so let's talk about that for a few minutes. First of all, you know, many lawyers, whether it's a time of COVID or not, look like this little creature under the rock. You know, they kind of hide out and hope that business will come in. Um, and that, unfortunately, hope is not a strategy. So it's, and it's certainly not a strategy during this time. Uh, so what I would say is whether it's a, a time of crisis or not, the first thing to do is make sure you're crystal clear about what you do and whom you serve. That is the foundation of all of your marketing and business development because when you know what it is you do and whom it is you serve and you can articulate that clearly, uh, then it becomes very, very clear to other people, to prospective clients, as well as to referral sources, how you can be helpful. Uh, and it's much more likely that your name is gonna come up when someone is looking to hire or refer a lawyer. If you're a little bit unclear about what you do and how you serve people, other people aren't going to be able to figure it out. And it's not their job to figure it out. It's your job to figure it out and to be able to articulate it. Once you've figured that out, um, and you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be just one practice area, it could be a couple. But once you figure that out and you feel comfortable sharing with people how you help, then it's important to have foundational materials. This is the marketing piece, right? So people talk about marketing and they talk about business development and they kind of interact and, and you know, cross over the lines. But the real difference between the two is that business development is really one-on-one -on -one relationships that you're developing. And much of the, um, a lot of the way that we bring on our clients is through personal relationships and professional relationships, right? So that one-on-one -on -one getting to know people, having them know, like, and trust you and understanding what you do and how you can be helpful to them, et cetera, is important and it's the business development side. The marketing side is typically uh, what we talk about when we refer to one-to-many um, uh, tactics. So that would be plenty of people who can come visit your website, seeing your professional photo, reading your professional biography, what I'm doing with you guys right now could be considered marketing because I'm giving a webinar. So I think that having these things set up for yourself where you're comfortable with your website, you feel that it accurately reflects what you do um, and perhaps your values and your personality, 
making sure you have an updated professional photo in the last few years and a professional biography that you're comfortable with and that reflects the, the depth and breadth of what you do. I also would argue that you could have a speaker's biography and an article's blurb. So the article's blurb being the little thing, you know, at the end of any article that you publish and the speaker's biography being something that you can give to whoever's introducing you um, so that they can read it. And, and you know that when they introduce you, it's going to be an accurate representation of who you are. So earlier on when we started this webinar, Susan was kind enough to introduce me and she made me sound just utterly fabulous, but it wasn't because she decided I was so fabulous and, and figured it all out. I actually gave her a speaker's biography and asked her to use that to introduce me. Uh, and I learned to do that after being introduced several times as it was something like, here's our speaker, um, Elise Holtzman, she's a coach. So, you know, again, this is really about controlling what other people see about you. Of course, your LinkedIn profile is critical, your Facebook profile, if you're using that, um, and any other social media platform. So these are really important tools. And again, now's a great time to sit down and make sure, you know, do a review, do a little bit of an audit, make sure that these things reflect you and that others are seeing you the way you want to be seen. When it comes to business development and individual relationships and building your network, I talk a lot about both growing and um, nurturing your network. So when I say nurturing, I'm talking about making sure you're in touch with people who are already in your network. And building, of course, is adding new people to your network. What I find for people uh, for sometimes is that people are waiting around for the network to grow, and they're waiting around for their network to do something for them and bear fruit. And what I'm suggesting here is that it's very important to be super intentional about doing both of those things, nurturing and growing your network. So right now, it's all about connection. I would argue it's always all about connection, but certainly during the time of the pandemic. And so use all of these different platforms to connect with people. Depending on how old you are, what generation you're in, what your comfort level is, some of these might be more comfortable to you than others. So interestingly, you know, I have several clients who are in their early 30s, uh, and they pronounced it to me to be kind of weird to use the telephone, to pick up the telephone and call someone. They're much more comfortable emailing or connecting through social media. Um, it may be the opposite for people who are more my generation or older, um, where you know, some of this stuff feels usable but doesn't necessarily feel so natural. So I would suggest using all of these things, having Zoom cocktail hours with people, um, having one-on-ones with people on Zoom where you would normally take someone out to lunch or go for a cup of coffee or something like that. If you're not on any of these platforms um, and you find them a little bit overwhelming, it's easy enough to Google this stuff. I, I find that I, I become a technology genius only when I Google things. There are all sorts of YouTube videos online where you can learn how to do virtually anything. Um, my, my young adult daughter has done some things and I've said, how did you learn how to do that? And she said, oh, I just watched a YouTube video on it. So I wondered why I sent her to college if she could have learned everything on YouTube. Um, so connect through all of these platforms and any others that you may be on. And then finally, I want to just talk to you about visibility. So one of the reasons to connect with people is to develop that know, like, and trust factor, maintain those networks. Another reason is to be visible, because the fact of the matter is, no matter how much of an expert you are, um, if you are invisible, nobody knows you're an expert. So you can be absolutely skilled and fabulous at what you do, uh, but you need to be visible in the legal community and in the business communities or, or um, personal communities that people come from, that your, your target market comes from. So how can you deliver value um, to others and raise your visibility. One of the things I talk about a lot is giving before you get. And so there's this concept of basically delivering as much value as you can, um, not viewing everything as a transaction, but kind of putting things out there, being as helpful as you can to other people, uh, and then understanding that because of the law of reciprocity and because people see that you have value to offer, you will have it come back to you. There are a number of different ways, I know we're getting to the end of our time and we're almost finished. Um, there are a number of different ways that you can give value. 
It could be webinars. It can be articles, all of these other things that are listed here. Sometimes just listening to other people and commenting on what they're doing, for example, on LinkedIn is a great way to deliver value because you, you validate for other people that what they're doing is important. Um, and I will say one, one little tip I would add is that if you uh, have written an article, turn it into a webinar. If you've given a webinar, turn it into a series of articles. Repurpose and reuse whatever content you have. And just sit down and think about what it is that your typical client needs. So I could talk a lot more about this, um, but I'm not going to in the interest of time. I'm happy to answer questions about it. Uh, I do want to want to show you some a, a fun thing. So if you guys have your phones um, in front of you and you have the LinkedIn app, just sign into the linked app, uh, LinkedIn app, and I'm going to show you something fun that you you can do with other folks. So this photo, you know, for obvious reasons, it's here. This is a time of you know very stormy time, but. I would argue that all of us are resilient. We just have to find a way to weather this storm, you know, bending, not breaking, all of that sort of thing, and reach out to other people for help. You don't have to do this by yourself. So um, in that regard, this is kind of the fun thing that I wanted to show you. So if you see this QR code on the side of my uh, contact information, if you hold up your LinkedIn uh, app, there are four, I think there are four little squares, three little squares in the upper right hand corner of your LinkedIn profile on your phone. And you can click the button there that allows you to capture a QR app. And if you just hold it up to the, the QR app, um, code that's on the screen, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And one of the reasons I think this is great is, you know, people have their phones in front of them all the time. And this is something that you can do. You can go into LinkedIn, you can get yourself a, a unique QR code, put it on slides, put it wherever, uh, you know, on any marketing materials you have. And that way people, it makes it really, really easy for people to connect with you. So I would love to have anybody who's interested connect with me. Um, I also would like to, as a thank you for coming to the webinar, um, send you a marketing and business development guide. It's just a, a few pages. It's got a checklist on there some of the things that you can do to make sure that you're taking care of your practice, some of the things that we talked about and a couple of other things. Um, and I can send you that and I can also send you um, a link to the business development article that I wrote and published in the New York Law Journal uh, that has six tips for business de development during the COVID crisis. Um, so thank you. I, I look, I'm hoping there are questions and I look forward to answering those. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and see if we can, there, Susan, and see if we have questions. Thank you so much, Elise. Um, while I'm giving people a moment to write their questions into the chat box, um, I also wanted to say that we will be posting um, this recording. This program is being recorded right now. We will post that on our website and whatever else you would like to be posted with that, we're happy to include. Obviously, your contact information um, is, uh, if you give us a PDF of your slides, we can pull that up um, as well. Uh, and you know anything else that you would like us to post. And of course, please feel free to reach out directly to Elise. And as she said, she's going to be happy to share with you the, um, the two resources that she mentioned. Uh, while I'm waiting for people to write in any questions, um, I was wondering, in the event that we have some people on today who are feeling like they're just a little bit stuck in that ending um, phase or the um, neutral zone, I wondered if you have any tips for people um, who need a little bit of a nudge to, to move forward out of those two areas that are a little bit um, a stifling of activity. Yeah, you know, it's understandable, as I said, to, I, I think a lot of people are feeling a lack of motivation, right? Even when you, you know, you, even if you love what you're doing, and even if you want your practice to be successful, which of course everybody does, it, it's really hard when everything, literally everything has changed. I think that for, you know, for people who are extroverted and love being out there with people and talking to people, I think this is, can be very difficult. I think even for introverts, this is starting to get old. So I think one of the things to do is to try to, you know, again, going back to part one, take some time for yourself, 
and try to connect to that motivation, right? What, before this happened, what got you out of bed every day? Was it knowing that you're providing for the people in your life that you love? Feeling that you are, um, maybe it's feeling that you are being able to be the best you you can be. Maybe it's uh, serving the population that you're serving or interacting with other people and, and being helpful. Whatever it is for you, and those are only a few examples because everybody's motivated by something different, connect with that. Maybe even write it down. What is it that I care about? So that you can connect not just to this big mess that we're all involved in and have that get you down, um, but that you can remember what you're doing this for. And also I would say pick one or two things to do, right? When things get overwhelming, um, what happens is our threat level goes up. So it's that fight or flight response. Sometimes we get paralyzed. So, you know, fight or flight or just be paralyzed, right? I think that there's a third option and there's a lot going on right now. So I would say pick one or two things that you want to do. Don't overload yourself with a tremendous to-do list. You know, what the, all of the ideas that I just gave you guys, that's a menu of options. It doesn't mean you have to do all of it. So maybe pick one thing, pick two things, give it a shot. And also I would say seek out help. So whether it's your best friend, whether it's your spouse, whether it's a, an adult child who's come back to your house and is really good at technology, you don't have to do this by yourself. And I think that's part of the overwhelm is feeling a little bit alone. I think a lot of us feel that way. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, one of the things in Massachusetts that we've recently done, um, our Supreme Court, our top court is the Supreme Judicial Court. and the SJC um, set up a permanent well-being committee and its director, Heidi Alexander, who um, used to be here at LOMAP and now is the director of that program, um, in the website, which is lawyerwellbeingma.org, she's um, done a couple of things. She, there's, there are a number of resources there, but there's also a tech hotline so you can access that in call with your or write with your questions about technology and then the other thing that we did um, over at mass flow map in our resources is co collect a list of how-to videos for some of the more um, popular technologies out there so if you ever feel stuck i mean i think you know at least you made such a great point about i love what you said i can't um quite remember the phrasing, but something about being a genius every time you Google um, how to use a piece of technology. Right. And I think that's so true. Um, you know, so much of the technology out there comes with how-to videos. You just have to ask Google and boom, um, there it is. Yeah, and I think that you guys have amazing resources, obviously. And one of the things that I, that I find is that people have this vague sense that the resources are there but they somehow feel like, oh, you know, that's for other people, that's not for me. Other people need that, I don't. Um, I find that even in large law firms where they have marketing departments and business development departments and all of that sort of thing, and people don't even know, the lawyers don't even know about these amazing resources that they have at their fingertips and don't use them. So, you know, I would just encourage, I'm just gonna put in a plug for Mass Low Map and just say to the folks on the call that, you know, if you've been grateful that, you know, these webinars belong and that you have this opportunity, look and see what else Mass Low Map has for you because now's the time um, that all of these amazing resources could be a game changer for you. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for saying that. And it's also, you know, a great reminder, we are free and we are confidential. So, you know, you can't go wrong there. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, I don't see any other questions. Um, so I'm gonna thank you once again for your time and your expertise. It was really terrific. We um, got some very lovely feedback. I mean, somebody, I'll just share it with you. Somebody said, this is phenomenal and asked it who was going to be shared later. So of course the answer- Oh, that's so nice, thank you. Thank yeah. you, yeah, it's been my pleasure. I am a big nerd about this stuff. I love what I do. Um, and so again, if anybody wants to connect with me, I would love to hear from you. You can email me at elise at thelawyersedge.com or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to send you um, whatever free stuff I have. So don't be a stranger. In the meantime, everyone stay safe and healthy. And thank you, Susan. Oh, again. you're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, and I just want to remind everybody that um, on May 27th, so two weeks from today, also at noon, Justin Kelsey will be joining us and 
He is going to be talking about email out of office messages, a missed marketing opportunity. Uh, so please come back and join us on May 27th. And everybody have a great afternoon. And thanks again, Elise. Thank you, Susan. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.